Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. That's much better. Um, first of all, uh, it's real. It's a real honor for me and a real pleasure to be here. Um, I actually was not expecting to see so many people uh, and so many of you, and it gave me so many flashbacks in terms of when I was from high school all the way when I was in college. And uh, I'm a, let me tell you a little about me. And um, I think they gave me 30 minutes. And if I'm fast talking about myself and how I reached to this position, maybe we have some QA for five, 10 minutes. And uh, if you ask any questions, uh, that way it would be much more dynamic and interactive. But originally, I'm a farm boy from Atillo, Puerto Rico. It's in the northern part of Puerto Rico. I'm a dairy farmer. So I used to, on weekends, um, I'm, a, I'm the oldest uh, of five children, so that means on weekends and summer I have to work, wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to help with the farm, meaning the, the cows. We had to milk them. So uh, that's how my life started, which is pretty cool because that I had to be prepared for storms, hurricanes, droughts, and so on and so forth. That helped me now that I'm in charge also of fully healthy burners for the nation. But uh, one, of the, one of the things that I promised myself was when I go to college and I do my pre-med and then I go to medical school, I never, never, never going to go into a specialty that I have to wake up in the middle of the night. And then, then I became an OBGYN. So 90% of our work is during the night. Well, after I did, uh, first of all, so you know, always think that about yourself in terms of who you are and how you can achieve things. Um, never be afraid. But the most important thing is understanding of who, of who you are. And to have a friend or a mentor that can help you. And you don't have to have one mentor. You can have many, 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 many mentors that can help you in many, many ways. Uh, in high school, my advisor told me that I would never go into medicine. Uh, and the reason was detention room had my name written all over the place. I was very good in mathematics and science. Uh, conduct was not my specialty. So, um, and then when I went to college, uh, I realized that I, I went into a fraternity, so I'm going to be very honest. Uh, I like Thursdays a lot. Uh, but, but I realized that if, if I didn't pay attention, I would never be able to first pass the exam, and second, be able to go to uh, medical school. So I had to balance party time with study time. But I had some boys also that would help us. So we, we, work, we work hard, and so on and so forth. I did my medical school in Puerto Rico, went to Connecticut, where I live, and did my specialty in obstetrics and gynecology. I also did a master's in business administration, and the purpose of the master was because I thought that, yes, as a doctor, I can help one person or a lot of persons in one day, but I would not be able to, to help the entire community. And I thought that I needed to understand better how to work communities. And there's many opportunities to do that. You can do a master's in public health or in public administration, or you don't have to do that, just, just to work. But I thought I wanted also to be able to manage better if I was going to be a leader. So essentially that's why I did my MBA and worked out very good because then I became the Commissioner of Health for the State of Connecticut, which you call here the Secretary of Health for the State of California. And, and at that time, uh, you, you, I firmly believe, if you're going to remember anything about what, what I said today, and this I firmly, firmly, firmly believe, there's no coincidence in life, there's none. I think coincidence are the chances that God has given to you to do something and make a decision about something. And then it's up to you to make it or not. And it's, the way I relate that, the way I visualize that, is like walking down a hallway with hundreds and hundreds of doors at the, both sides of the hallway. And you have the option of opening any door or keep walking. Sooner or later, two things are going to happen. Either you're going to fall or you're going to hit the wall at the end of the hallway. But before that, you had the opportunity to open a lot of doors. And if you open any door, you may find another hallway, or you may find another hundred doors, and so on and so forth. And 
And I say that because every turn and decision that I have made in my life related to my career or my personal life, I've had many implications after that. And, and now, one of the things I try, try to do when I meet any person, it can be in a plane, it can be in a meeting, it can be any place. And we are able to speak. I always ask for information, who you are, if you have a card or an email. And you will be so surprised how many people from 20 years ago are either working with me or right now we are creating projects that are helping other people. Or actually, we are being able to help each other. And one of the things we fail when at, at, in college, high school, and, and early part of your life is to realize that those are the doors, those are the people that may have helped you essentially accelerate or amplify your future. So think about that because I think it's extremely important. I'm going to fast track uh, what I did after that. After commissioner health, I realized that not only helping my state was going to help my state, so I had to get involved in the national arena. And then I became involved with all the health commissioners of the nation, all the secretaries of the nation. Uh, there's an organization called ASTO. That's another thing, get involved in every possible organization that you believe and has some connection with you. Do that. And then I became the president of the organization. Next I know, I'm the senior most American in the WHO. I'm the deputy director of the Pan American Health Organization. And then I realized that I'm not only helping United States, within United States, I'm helping United States and the world through the other organization. And then, from there, I became a senior vice president of a corporate uh, organization, a, a company, a private sector. I was in charge of global health. Actually, the company has business here in California, a significant amount of healthcare business in the California area. And I was there for a couple of years, and then this position came up. So you have a, a concept of how all these coincidences, called coincidence, help me now the budget, the budget of my agency, if it was a country, would be the ninth largest country in the planet. Ninth largest country. And we always see all public health and all science in health and human services. And the Department of Health and Human Services. I wear the uniform, I'm the Admiral in the United States Public Health Service Corps, which I actually Two things I'm going to say. There's, we have a website. I also want you to link at that website. And Lieutenant Commander Guillermo Aviles Mendoza on my left side. Uh, if anyone is interested in getting more information, please talk to him. Uh, my email is very simple. It's my name, joxel.garcia at hhs.gov. And honestly, please do not even hesitate send me an email. Send me an email, ask me questions, because that's how essentially things happen. Um, I'm not shy. You, as a farm boy, you cannot be shy. So I talk with presidents and queens and kings and everything, and, it's, and I talk with this thick accent. Half the time, I don't know what the heck I'm saying, but, uh, but I ask the question, and I try to learn from everybody. So essentially, um, that's who I am. I'm, I, I like to work a lot. Uh, I like sports. I have two kids. Yasha is 13. Kristen is 12. I play tennis. I ski. Uh, I play chess. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I have big, a big nose, big ears. Uh, so, um, but I think I still have 15 minutes. So, you, one thing I'm going to say before I ask you to ask me questions is the panel of people that are being uh, like admiral. Uh, uh, Robinson that is talking uh, after me. He's a superstar. Dr. Joan Reed, another superstar. Uh, I mean, I, I can go on and on and on with all the superstars that you are, are going to be listening from uh, after I, I spoke. These are people that I see them in D.C., in Harvard, at Yale University, at UC Davis, at all the great universities in Michigan, all the time talking not only to students, but to leaders of our nation, 